The Cleveland Cavaliers, I'm just saying, third straight game won by them. Mitchell and Garland with a combination 55 points beating Atlanta. Chandler, uh, you know we like lists. Is this the best backcourt in the NBA? Oof. I mean, they're up there. They, they are so young. They're so explosive. They can do it all. They're getting their teammates involved. They're, they're so fun to watch. Uh, I mean, there's there's still there's still a couple other, you know, there's still John Bain. There's still Dejounte Murray and Trey Young. There's still Maxi and Harden. But th these guys are these guys are doing it, and, and they're playing so well. And I think Garland got. You know, they each had time to play without one another and they kind of figured it out and they're really clicking together. And, and and this team is deep that they even last night, they missed, they were missing Dean Wade, they were missing Levert and they just sub in, you know, Jetty Osmond who goes off and they, and they have size, they have Lopez and Love coming in that are still valuable assets. So th this team is, is, is uh, you know, a very, very good team. And these two guys are obviously the head of the snakes and, and they're the main reason why. I mean, there was definitely a lot of question before we got to see them together if it would work. Uh, Shams, I want to ask you, how are they so similar? Same, same, but different. How is that? Well, they're similar in that they're both super dynamic. They, they're both on max contracts. They're both unselfish guards. They both can play off the ball, on the ball. What makes Darius Garland so prolific, I think, is that his, he's able to shoot the ball at a higher level from three-point range. We saw him the other night go for 50 points, 10 to 15 from three-point range. So he's got that in his arsenal. Where they're different, when I talk to people around their organization, is Darius Garland is a free-flowing guard. He really plays off the cuff. Donovan Mitchell, very regimented, has a very strict routine, has a very strict way he plays the game, pick and roll, things like that, where Darius Garland is really free-flowing. So they're able to bounce off each other really well. They both have an unselfishness that I think carries from the fact that they, they want to win and they want this team to succeed at a high level. Yeah, I think their ability both to get it off the dribble is going to be huge for them in the playoffs. I do think they're the best backcourt in the league. They're not... They're going to struggle a little bit defensively, but I, I, Donovan, he's so athletic and so long that he can make it work. And, you know, DG, he's just going to have to figure it out on that end. But their ability to get off the bounce and both shoot it and drive to the cup makes them more dynamic than, I think, the the backcourts that we mentioned. Even with Atlanta, you know, uh, uh, they're not shooting as well. And then you go with the, uh, the Grizzlies duo. Uh, Desmond Bain's not getting off the bounce like that. And if, even if you go to the Warriors and you look at what Clay is and he keeps telling us that he's still him but he's he's not what he used to be i, I definitely had them as the best uh backcourt duo in the league and it's going to be scary come to playoffs because that's what a lot of playoff games come to is what can you get in the half court off the bounce you know when when you start playing mismatched basketball who can who can score better than these two guys we've seen it already from donovan and you know i think we'll see it from from, from dg as well he's only 23 years old it's hmm. it's his time to really make that leap and you make a good point. And the, and the playoffs, these guys, they're tough to scout because they can do so many things. They can get out on the break. They both can go ISO. They both can shoot. And they both have these, you know, pick and roll options with, with Allen and Mobley that are just lob threats. So the way they've surrounded these two guards, this this team is, is really, really tough to defend because they're so versatile in so many different ways they can score. Well, all that being said, Chandler, where would you rank them today in the Eastern Conference? Who the Cavs? Yeah, uh, probably, probably kind of where they are. I would think third. I think the Bucks are still better. I think the Celtics are still better. And then, uh, you know, they're right there. I, I tell you that, they, like I said, they're so young and explosive. I don't want to play this team in the playoffs. They have energy. That place gets booming. And, and like I said, they can they can beat you in many different ways. So I, I think they're right there, and I think they should be definitely gunning for home court advantage. Everyone agree, Eddie? Third, good. Yeah, I mean, they're third right now in the standings, and, and that's with DG missing, what, like two weeks with the eye issue. And uh, what I like the most, is I think Chandler is alluding to as well, is that they can put so many different variable variances in their lineups out there. They can play Kevin Love at center if they want and just completely s surround those guys with shooting. They can pair him with one of those big centers that they have. They can just go gigantic and, and protect the rim and fly <laughs> over the floor on defense. Uh, they got a lot going on and then Dean Wade when they get him back he's been a knockdown shooter Karras has been shooting well this year I'm not the biggest Karras fan but he has been knocking it down so they can do a lot it, it's going to be very interesting to see them in the playoffs people are not going to want to want that matchup and and they got Rubio who hasn't played once this year who was so good for them last year so I love them I like them a lot 
I like That's it. They're kind point. of the unknown. Yeah, the, the unknown. It's like Memphis. Nobody ever wanted to face Memphis in the playoff. You just don't know what you're going to get. And that's what makes it exciting.